everyone welcome to my youtube channel myself anup singh in today video we are going to see the chapter number 2 that is aircraft diffuser that is also called aircraft inlets so this chapter you can find out in aircraft propulsion 2 so in today lecture we are going to try to cover most of all the topics that is suitable for btech program or also you can find out in the syllabus of btech program so first we are going to see the introduction so in the introduction first i am going to show you what is the function of the inlet the function of the inlet to capture and decelerate the air prior to entry of the compressor so if you see in this ppt so you can find out there is uh, mention the three function that is very important function what i have uh, mentioning here that is to bring the air smoothly into the engine then second one to slow down the fluid and increase the pressure and third one is about to deliver a uniform flow to the compressor because once you go for the second primary component the first primary component of the aero engine is a diffuser second primary component is compressor so compressor required uniform flow with minimum total pressure loss otherwise the stability margin of the compressor is going to increase that we are going to discuss later uh, in the chapter of compressor so first of all try to understand three this three is the basic purpose of the diffuser and also our requirement in the gas turbine engine so we already aware about that about the gas turbine engine the first component is diffuser and we find out it facing the first air encountered and second component is compressor so we are trying to maintain also to minimize the total pressure loss otherwise it's directly affect the performance of compressor as well as combustion chamber so here i have mentioned one example also uh, this one so if the diffuser incurred a large total pressure so it is also manifestant or affect the combustion performance for example if it is find out 1.1 bar means 0.1 bar pressure loss in the diffuser that quiz is 2.5 bar drop at the combustion chamber means this is a biggest disadvantages so we are trying to design the diffuser accordingly to maintain the smooth uniform and also less pressure loss after passing the diffuser understand so it is very basic one that's the reason if you find out at different different uh, operating condition of aircraft the inlet is optimized for the cruising condition it provide it must provide adequate mass flow rate during all engine operating conditions like uh, including like uh, take off landing maneuvering but you can find out some inlets incorporate to provide additional air flow during the high thrust condition at the take off but generally we can find out inlet efficiency is characterized by the stagnation pressure recovery and that is the measure of the available energy in the air that actually make into the compressor so guys this is the very simple definition what i need to explain you in introduction also i have mentioned about the engine installation we find out that engine is installed under the wing base of the vertical stabilizer root of the wing and also under the fuselage why i am showing this one because inlet is the first component first primary component is like a opener if you know in the cricket the first opening batsman taking the all the responsibility and pressure at the starting similarly intake is also a opener uh, a component primary components in the gas turbine engine or you can say aero engine so the location is very important so the location if it is under the wing so you can find out the air entry is different similarly in the case of base of vertical stabilizer root of the wing and under the wing so with respect to with respective to the engine installation location 
that is also important before designing the intake because it's going to affect directly the performance of the intake and also rest of the component like compressor and combustion chamber so in this figure you can find out the intake at uh, base of the fuselage at the central part of the fuselage beneath of the fuselage side of the fuselage so you can find out easily with the help of this figure so about the inlet here i have uh, substitute very important points like inlet are very important to overall jet engine performance will greatly influence the jet engine thrust output means the intake capture the required amount of the mass flow rate that is going to perform at the rest of the primary components like compressor combustion chamber turbine and at the last you can find out the nozzle with the help of that you can get the thrust so the faster airplane goes more critical the inlet duct design become means in the case of supersonic aircraft you can find out the inlet design is very complex because in that case the intake or you can say inlet is is facing the supersonic flow condition so that we are going to discuss in the coming of the slide because you can also find out there are two types of the inlet one is subsonic inlet and second is supersonic inlet so the engine thrust will be high only if the inlet inlet duct supply the engine with the required air flow at the highest possible pressure if you are aware about the equation of the thrust the thrust equation is directly giving the value of uh, the total thrust value so in that equation you can find out the importance of mass flow rate inlet duct also at the parasitic drag like skin friction drag viscous drag and and also interference drag so guys the design of inlet is very important otherwise if drag is going to increase if you know the aircraft performance subject so you can find out drag is directly proportional to the weight if drag is increases 5 kilo newton so the weight is also going to increase 5 kilo newton understand so that is biggest disadvantages and also you can find out it should be as a straight and smooth as possible and design in such a way that boundary layer separation is the minimum so we are going to discuss this also boundary layer separation that is our very important topic in this chapter that also we are going to discuss at subsonic condition and also supersonic condition so we required to maintain this boundary layer separation at minimum because the flow is passes through the first component that is intake that is called diffuser so the flow is trying to stick to the surface or inner surface or outer surface of the diffuser that creates a problem that creates a secondary flow so that is creates a problem of drag and also you can find out is creates the problem of the remaining components of the gas turbine engine like compressor combustion chamber understand so i already told you the there are two types of the inlet we are going to see in this chapter subsonic inlets and supersonic inlet but before we are going to see these two types one thing i am going to clear we are going to see only the basic concepts we are not going to see the equations design parameter that is a different level guys if you go for doing master degree so you can find out in deep study about the inlet here we are going to convey this information to the student as per syllabus to try to convince to the student or candidate that to aware about what is the function of the inlet and what is the important parameters of the inlet before thinking designing of the intake means inlet so in because there is a so many reasons are also there what i have substituted in the introduction inlets are very important to overall jet engine performance and will greatly influence the jet engine thrust output because it is related to the mass flow rate and also related to the performance of compressor and combustion chamber so that's the reason here we are relating the directly thrust output of the engine 
the deceleration of the air flow at high flight mach number or aerodynamic compression can be achieved with the help of inlet that we are going to see in supersonic inlets understand the faster aircraft i already told you in the supersonic aircraft you can find out the design of the inlet is very complex because it's handling the supersonic flow understand like shock wave and all and also i have mentioned to that engine thrust will be high only if the inlet duct supply the engine with the required amount of the air flow at highest possible pressure understand so this is all are depend upon the performance of the diffuser compressor and combustion chamber then turbine and nozzle is going to expand the flow understand is very simple and uh, nowadays you can find out the intake used in the transport aircraft are quite different from the military aircraft and all operational transport aircraft are subsonic and subsonic intake having the surface with a smooth continuous curvature like s duct if you go to see the circular s duct and also you can find out such a intake have a thick le leading edge that is called a lip understand that i am going to show you in the figure and intake of the turbo prop engine suppose i will take some engine intake of the turbo prop engine are slightly more complicated due to the presence of propeller and gearbox but if you see for turbo jet and turbo fan engine the lip of the intake is very smooth understand so let's see about the subsonic inlet first so here i am here i have substituted one very simple typical geometry you can find out this area is inlet and this area is the entry of the compressor that is called exit of the duct or that is also called aip plane aip aip means aerodynamic interface plane understand so in subsonic inlet there are two types one is internal compression and second is external compression why inlet com internal compression and external compression because we are achieving the compression process with the help of internal area and also with the help of external area of the subsonic intake understand that's the reason it's a two type in inlet in internal compression you can find out the few points i have mentioned i am not going to uh, show you about the uh, geometrical parameter here i am going to give only the information like it like a diversion duct internal compression subsonic in intake is a diversion duct and act as a subsonic internal compression diffuser the pressure gradient dp by dp by d y the pressure gradient of the intake are keep a low enough to avoid large stagnation pressure loss understand when you are going to understand this fundamental suppose i am not able to keep low this dp by dy so the pressure loss total stagnation loss pressure loss is going to high that is causes the problem in the combustion chamber because we are using the combustion chamber to raise the highest temperature when we are going to raise the highest temperature if my pressure is high then i am going to raise the highest temperature otherwise what i need to add i am going to add more fuel in order to increase the temperature that is my required temperature so my fuel consumption is going to increase otherwise i am going to manage this pressure loss understand so this fundamental dp by d rho you are going to understand only and only with the help of boundary layer flow separation so my request to every candidate and all the students just go through it the chapter number 2 in the fluid mechanics fluid dynamics fluid mechanics whatever you can find out the subject in your course the one simple topic is given that is boundary layer boundary layer flow separation just read it about pressure gradient and velocity gradient understand to if it is if to keep a low pressure gradient 
the diversion angle means diversion angle of the diversion angle means this guys if you see this uh, i am going to zoom if you see this inlet and in this inlet diversion means this angle this angle i am going to draw this alpha this angle understand this portion is going to divert means i am going to draw the straight line and this angle is called angle alpha this angle is called alpha and this is called diversion angle understand so this a diversion angle is possible to make a small only and only if your pressure total pressure loss is less otherwise which increase the length of the diffuser that is not compromisable i am not going to increase the length of the diffuser otherwise what happen the whole length of the engine is going to increase so this is a fundamental basic fundamental once you go and uh, take the project small minor project about to design the subsonic intake so you can understand what is the what is this parameter understand now external compression subsonic intake as we know that the boundary layer flow separation in the diffuser passage quizzes the losses which losses to total pressure losses if the compression of the air is made to occur when it's enter the diffuser near to the isentropic compression is the possible we already know in the ideal con con condition we are assuming isentropic compression that is ideal condition and in this condition we are assuming all losses are zero there is no losses but this is only possible in the ideal condition understand only possible so guys the thing is very simple if you want this ideal condition in the actual condition that is called adiabatic compression so in that case you need to manage the total pressure loss minimum total pressure loss understand now the inlet is made up a, uh, upon a constant area duct enclosed by a counter cow means if you want to avoid this losses you should maintain you are going to meet the inlet the constant area duct enclosed by a counter cowl means cowl means cow lip i am going to show you what is cow lip if you are going to zoom zoom this picture i am going to zoom this picture so you can see this portion is called cow lip understand so this portion this portion is called cow lip this portion this portion is cow lip and cow lip is like a round shape understand in order to provide the aerodynamics entry of the flow in this way understand so that's the reason and also external flow in this way that's the reason the cow lip geometry or you can say shape is very important so this is about the external compression and yes the pressure presence of the cowl quiz the stagnation streamline to diverse the upper stream and lower stream of the flow between the two section that i already i have explained it provide a aerodynamics direction of the upper surface and lower surface flow so this is about the external compression subsonic intake so this is the type of what i need to explain you only the basic things okay now inlet design inlet design in this case why i have mentioned this because we required few parameters consideration before starting the calculation the inlet design require compromise between external and internal deceleration it means that once you are going to take a inlet condition like how much the mass flow rate we required how much the losses we are going to reduce that types of design parameter if you get then you can find out there will be a losses are going to associate losses are associate because of external and internal deceleration that we are going to avoid in the performance parameter calculation and both can lead difficulty and balance is required so guys there will be a method are available once you go through that method you can avoid this difficulty and losses 
and also you can find out the exam the effect of external deceleration on inlet design methods are needed for calculating both internal and external flow that is called potential flow and boundary layer growth on the upper and inner surface of the intake so guys this is also a very important and always i am explaining to the student that go through it boundary layer concept in the intake once you do the uh, study of intake always you required study of boundary layer separation <coughs> now pressure rise pressure rise means pressure ratio the external pressure ratio here why we are going to discuss this pressure ratio because our main target to achieve up to the combustion chamber is pressure ratio or pressure rise so we are achieving this target with the help of diffuser and with the help of compressor understand with the help of diffuser and with the help of compressor so in this case very important few parameters is going to considered and also get affect by the performance that is external compression and area ratio area ratio of diffuser and area ratio at, at the entry of the compressor or you can say exit of the diffuser so you can consider only the diffuser just ignore compressor compressor you can consider only the performance and diffuser you can consider about the area ratio understand a max by ai a, a max means exit area of the diffuser so external compressor here i have mentioned that is going to affect by the location of the engine or you can say location of the intake because already we are discussed at the at the starting of the chapter that the intake is the first primary component of the aero engine is a first opener batsman <laughs> in the combustion chamber in the gas turbine engine so the external compression you can find out the location if the location is not good so external compression is causing the problem understand now internal pressure rise depends upon the deduction of velocity ratio between the entry of the inlet diffuser and the entry of the compressor inlet of the again i am going to explain now the nasal size the required for the low drag nasal size means guys the inlet size nasal is the nose nasal means nose so the entry portion i am going to show you the figure so you guys are understand for example this is my figure okay i am going to remove this one uh, it is one and i am going to zoom this nasal means this one nasal portion is called this one and this portion this portion is called inlet this portion is called inlet and this whole portion is also called inlet or also called intake understand so don't confuse in some of the book this entry portion is called inlet understand so this is called nasal this is called nasal so the nasal size is very important is very important minimum nasal size is required to produce or to capture the required mass flow rate otherwise it it produce drag how it is produced because it squeezes the secondary flow during the entrance of the entrance of the uh, air flow and also external surface of the diffuser so guys this is the diagram this is the graph what i have mentioned this graph is a area ratio versus a deceleration ratio deceleration ratio is the compression process or you can say decreasing the kinetic energy so in this graph i have mentioned because you can understand the area is very important factor because it is going to affect direct pressure rise value and pressure rise value is our requirement is our requirement so with the help of this graph this is a very simple graph what i have mentioned this is only for explanation purpose but if you want to design the diffuser subsonic diffuser so you can go and find out in the propulsion book you can find out there is so many values are given about the area ratio and about the deceleration so here you can find out the curve of 0.6 0.5 and 
पॉइंट फोर एरिया रेशियो एंड विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू डैट यू कैन फाइंड आउट एट डिफरेंट डिफरेंट एरिया रेशियो यू कैन फाइंड आउट डिफरेंट डिफरेंट डी एसेलरेशन अंडरस्टैंड सो डी एसेलरेशन और कंप्रेशन प्रोसेस ऑल्सो गोइंग टू एफेक्ट बाय द एरिया रेशियो नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सी अबाउट द परफॉर्मेंस क्राइटेरिया सो ओनली वी आर गोइंग टू सी द बेजिक एंड ओवर व्यू वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू सी द डेरीवेशन एंड ऑल and this diagram is called pv ts diagram of diffuser or you can say intake p ts diagram here i have mentioned because the calculation sometime what happen the small small isentropic related calculation is asked in the gate exam so if you are aware about this diagram so you can easily draw this figure okay so it, this diagram is very simple but here is mentioned both static and stagnation condition that's the reason otherwise i am going to draw the figure yeah this here so here suppose i will draw the ts diagram is very simple ts diagram just draw it two line and in this one i ideal condition and the dotted line is my actual condition i am taking this is my one two and this one is 2 2 dash and 2 one is the actual condition and dash means ideal condition understand so this is the ts diagram with the help of this you can easily find out uh, uh, usually easily do small small numericals what you guys are done in the breton cycle understand now the performance in performance criteria the first very important performance criteria is isentropic efficiency so whatever i have drawn the ts diagram this one i am going to go, this one so isentropic efficiency formula is what isentropic efficiency formula i already told you this is a diffuser diffuser so you can see here is mentioned in the terms of temperature rise ideal upon actual condition in ideal this is a t not 2 dash by ta upon t not 2 of minus ta ideal upon actual ideal upon actual deceleration process understand is very simple formula and uh, this one in the form in the form of enthalpy so once you go for uh, isentropic relation in the terms of pressure ratio and in the terms of mach number you can substitute this two value in the diffuser formula which formula diffuser this one diffuser formula so you can find out at the last this formula why i am showing you can find out every time one question in the gate exam related to this intake efficiency is given and find out what is the pressure ratio in diffuser efficiency is given mac number is given only find out this pressure ratio p not 2 by pa is the pressure ratio of the diffuser that is called deceleration process understand so just by heart this formula for your gate preparation i hope so you guys are understanding what i am explaining is very simple and this uh, the formula isentropic formula in the terms of uh, pressure ratio this is also important and this one is also important with the help of this two you you can get the diffuser formula but before that you can also understand about this one this formula understand diffuser formula ideal upon actual compression ideal upon actual compression understand compression means deceleration process that's it now the second performance criteria is ram efficiency or you can say duct efficiency so if you see the efficiency what is the formula and what is the uh, definition of efficiency both are same duct efficiency and uh, and ram efficiency both are same so formula is already given in the terms of pressure ratio also you can write down in the terms of temperature temperature ke form mein bhi likh sakte ho understand so duct the, the definition is very simple that is 
the duct pressure efficiency ratio is defined as the ability of the duct to convert the kinetic energy or dynamic pressure energy at the inlet of the duct to the static pressure energy at the inlet of the compressor without loss in the total pressure so guys this is the main and very basic things and also you can find out it is a order of 98 percent it is the order of 98 percent order of 98 percent and there is a less friction so if you find out in any numericals and in any data that 98 percent duct efficiency or intake efficiency it means you can find out the curvature inside and outside curvature is very smooth aerodynamically smooth and the friction loss is negligible and very very less understand now ram recovery point ram recovery point is the aircraft speed at which the ram pressure rises equal to the friction pressure loss so guys ram recovery point is also a uh, performance parameter and here you can find out one new term ram pressure rise ram pressure rise means diffuser pressure rise diffuser pressure rise p naught 2 by p a that is diffuser pressure rise deacceleration that is called deacceleration understand so the aircraft speed the second definition also i have mentioned this one and this one the aircraft speed at which the compressor inlet total pressure is equal to the outside ambient pressure this is also a ram recovery point good uh, subsonic intake has the aircraft speed is 257.4 km per hour for a good ram recovery point this is a typical value and you can find out a gate examination question also so guys these types of questions is easily askable otherwise uh, small small isentropic related numericals is going to ask and you can find out easily that numerical in the gas dynamic subject understand subsonic diffuser and supersonic see supersonic diffuser is different that we are going to talk later so now we are going to see now we are going to see supersonic inlet so if you see for the supersonic inlet the application is supersonic aircraft like fighter aircraft military aircraft so even for a supersonic flight it remain necessary that the flow leave the inlet system be subsonic it means that what is the means of first line is very simple i am going to explain you suppose this is my intake this is my intake okay supersonic intake this is a rough design so don't consider this is a supersonic inlet but only just this is a rough design so suppose the air entry is mach number supersonic mach number is greater than one but it you can find out it is a it is a common that exit of the supersonic diffuser you can find out that is subsonic mach number is less than one understand that is the means you can find out any supersonic inlet so the supersonic it necessary you can find out that flow leave the inlet system at subsonic it is required to have a some good mean to deaccelerate the supersonic flow to the subsonic speed tolerable by exiting compressors or fan because see if the flow is supersonic if the flow is supersonic after mac number suppose it is greater than one so guys it is going to affect the compressor understand it is affect the performance of compressor because compressor is made up of number of fans number of blade you can find out in the compressor that is not designed for the handling for uh, supersonic flow understand that is designing for subsonic flow yes supersonic compressor is also available but that is a different case <coughs> now the types of the supersonic inlet the types of the supersonic inlet you can find out there are three basic types the first one is a conversion and diversion intake that is called a reverse nozzle diffuser second one is normal shock wave diffuser that is also called a pitot inlet in gate exam sometime it is called what is pitot inlet so if you are aware this is a normal shock diffuser so you can easily give the answer that is pitot tube inlet then third one is that oblique shock wave diffuser so this is a three very basic types of the diffuser 
that is supersonic diffuser or you can say supersonic inlet understand and suppose i am going to show the chart also for aircraft inlet for subsonic to supersonic you can find out in supersonic uh, uh, supersonic inlet the application is military aircraft and missile in missile technology on the other hand for i am talking for subsonic inlet that is used for civil aircraft like turbojet engine and turbofan engine passenger aircraft turboprop engine turbo shaft engine so in that case you can find out subsonic inlets but supersonic inlet military aircraft and missiles understand so this is very common and the very common is about this pitot inlet that is called normal shock wave diffuser now supersonic inlet with variable geometry you can see this two figure what i have mentioned this two figure this one and this one you can easily recognize the the first half is figure and second half is a graph so in this case you can find out the conversion this is a cd nozzle understand cd nozzle in this case you can find out not cd nozzle cd duct okay we are not defining this is a nozzle or diffuser but with the help of geometry we can understand which one is nozzle and which one is diffuser so the inlet of the this duct you can find out the geometry also different as compared to this one the you can find out mach number is less than 1 but at the exit you can find out mach number is greater than 1 because on because the design of convergent and divergent geometry of the duct and with the help of that you can define which one is the nozzle and which one is diffuser understand so this is also a important things so what i have understand that all the candidates should be because in the gate exam it's giving simple diagram and telling which one is nozzle and which one is diffuser and otherwise it give a simple isentropic relation and asking which one is nozzle and which one is diffuser so guys this geometry variable geometry you should understand to explain the function of the duct the duct is performing nozzle or duct is performing like diffuser now finally we are going to reach about the boundary layer so here i have mentioned only few things because you guys are going to understand then we are going to see what is the boundary layer flow separation effect at subsonic condition and supersonic condition we are not going to talk about transonic condition that is also a there but we are going to interest to see only the two conditions subsonic and supersonic so what is the first question is going to come what is boundary layer but guys don't forget what i have given the homework just go through and brush up about about the boundary layer flow separation and boundary layer effect in fluid dynamic subject or fluid mechanics subject so generally if you find out the definition boundary layer separates for a from a body due to the increasing fluid pressure in the direction of flow that is called adverse pressure gradient and increase in the fluid pressure that also increase the potential energy of the fluid that is the second point what i want to explain you the third is about kinetic energy decreases and the fourth point is if the kinetic energy decreases so the fluid flow also slow and boundary layer is going to thick understand the the thickness of the boundary layer through the body surface is going to thick and because of that wall stress decreases and fluid no longer to adhere to the wall it's going to stick to the wall and it squeezes the problem of secondary flow and also that squeezes the problem of drag and also going to perf uh, going to in uh, uh, means uh, affect the performance of remaining components now we are going to see the boundary layer separation in the subsonic flow so here i have mentioned the few points so you guys are understand what i want to explain in the case of subsonic flow subsonic flow over the inlet lip over the inlet lip second is high velocity flow causes the low pressure region followed by the high pressure region and third one is causing the boundary layer flow separation so guys this condition is given 
of subsonic flow try to understand subsonic flow if it is passes through the inlet leaf so it squeezes the problem what's the problem is squeezes the high velocity is decreases and pressure is going to increases understand but what happen it's not going to take a sub substituently it squeezes the low pressure region and that low pressure region squeezes the flow separation similarly you can find out in the supersonic flow condition boundary layer separation in supersonic flow so you can find out supersonic flow usually and in interrupt shock wave and that shock wave squeezes at the wall interaction and because of that it squeezes the flow separation understand so the super in supersonic condition boundary layer flow separation also causes a problem now how we are going to avoid the boundary layer flow separation so there will be a methods are available so what types of methods are available that we are going to see the first method is given from the next slide but he in this slide we are going to see what is the effect of the boundary layer separation that causes the poor pressure recovery also causing the external drag and decreasing the efficiency of the duct so this is the problem what we are finding in the case of boundary layer flow separation but there will be a methods are available to avoid that is is given but there will be a consists of the boundary layer separation large increase in the drag and flow distortion so guys this is the topic you can find out in the intake chapter and also few uh, topics are already there in the intake syllabus what i find out in different different college syllabus like flow distortion and uh, flow losses so guys flow losses is called total pressure loss understand there is no other types of loss are available that you can find out in the terms of drag that we already discuss in the introduction that is that uh, introduce the skin friction drag and induce drag and interference drag understand that types of drag you can do the study in the losses and losses that causes that mainly the pressure stagnation loss pressure total pressure loss understand and distortion flow distortion in the because of diffuser that you can do the advanced study in the different types of the duct like s duct serpentine intake duct but if you do the study about the subsonic and supersonic inlet basic study so there is no need to go for flow distortion study flow distortion study is required once you are going to do some research or do some projects understand because the in exit condition or the geometry of the diffuser also matter to do the deceleration process if it is not smooth so it not providing the smooth and required amount of the flow to the compressor in the gas turbine engine so that is also a matter what i am thinking so they if you want to go so the material material is available for flow distortion and in flow distortion you can find out different different parameter like uh, distortion parameters like uh, distortion intensity total pressure loss coefficient distor distortion intensity at 60 degree extend then uh, inlet distortion circumferential coefficient so there is so many parameters you can find out in flow distortion study but uh, what i am thinking on the btech syllabus of this aircraft diffuser or intake that is sufficient what i have covered in in today video lecture le chapter number 2 in aeronautical engineering air ka propulsion 2 subject so that is very important but guys i need to mention one thing here i am not showing any ppt but i need to uh, add a few points also about the this uh, intake that uh, always a designer should be considered to meet the following quantities what types of points like light weight and low cost of manufacturing that is very important point light weight and low cost of manufacturing 
in case of intake and uh, second point is like uh, provide the engine with adequate mass flow rate at a proper Mach number at the engine phase throughout the flight envelope during the takeoff, landing, cruise, climb, whatever. Understand? And also the third point what I, what I need to explain you like uh, provide smooth flow into the engine compressor that is low steady state distortion throughout the flight envelope because that provide the temporarily smooth flow to the engine compressor that is low dynamic distortion throughout the flight envelope so guys uh, if you want to do the more study and deep study about the flight envelope so you can find out the steady state distortion parameters and low dynamic distortion parameter but I don't think so it is that types of studies required in the BTEC yes once you go for MTEC that types of studies required because you are going to take some higher uh, benchmark in that case but nowadays you can find out not nowadays nowadays you can find out one very common word is stealth technology so the serpentine intake duct S duct is a very good options in military aircraft that provide a low radar signature low observable stilt requirement so that types of technology you can find out and different types of distortion parameter study you can easily find out so guys I hope so you guys are understand this chapter and if you find out any doubt you can give the com uh, give the and otherwise you can ask the question in the comment box okay guys so thank you so much for watching this video thank you